This is a surveying total station. And this is Apple's iPhone 13 Pro. Now I've made a few videos about these two devices comparing them to the iPhone's LiDAR sensor. But today I wanted to look at the iPhone's camera sensors. Now the iPhone 13 Pro has a 12 megapixel camera as well as a wide angle and ultra wide angle lens. Now using these cameras we're going to be doing something known as photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is the science of utilizing images in order to create accurate 3D maps. By using hundreds of images captured by any camera, we can stitch these images together and produce highly accurate 3D models and 3D maps. And this iPhone with its 12 megapixel camera can provide us with very high resolution images. Now today I want to survey this island in the center of my cul-de-sac with my iPhone using photogrammetry. And being that we're taking pictures that are approximately 5 feet off the ground, our ground sampling distance is going to be 0.07 inches per pixel or 1.8 millimeters per pixel. That is an insane amount of resolution and it's definitely going to provide us with very good data. Now the surveying total station is highly accepted as one of the most accurate pieces of equipment in the mapping industry. By utilizing the accuracy found in this total station, I want to see just how accurate the camera sensors are on this iPhone 13 Pro. By taking hundreds of images with my iPhone around this island, I can then stitch all of these images together and create a point cloud. A point cloud is a group of points that are generated from these images and each point will have an X, Y, and Z coordinate associated to it. So we should have coordinates for every point that we measure on this island. Now I've already gone ahead and surveyed this island using my surveying total station. I set my total station on one of the three control points that we're going to use to align the point cloud to the total station data. Aligning the iPhone's imagery data to this control is extremely important because we want to make sure that we're doing all of our comparisons to the same reference system. So these three control points will allow us to relate all of the data together. Now with the total station, I measured the back of the curb as well as the gutter right at the bottom. And I did this at every single one of these joints around the island. So those are the points that we're going to be observing in the point cloud after we capture the images with the iPhone 13 Pro. All right, so I have my iPhone 13 Pro right here. And as you can see on the screen, I'm going to be using an app called Pix 4D Catch. It's available in the App Store, so be sure to download it. I'll go ahead and launch Pix 4D Catch. And there we go, we have a live view of the screen in front of us. And down at the bottom, you're gonna see there is the shutter button. Once I press that shutter button, it's going to continuously collect imagery from our iPhone. All right, so we're going to start collecting imagery at point number one. I will then go to the island, measure all the way around the curb, making sure I also include imagery for point number two and point number three in the back so that we have a full set of images of the island and our control. All right, I got Pix4D Catch open and now we're gonna start doing photogrammetry with my iPhone 13 Pro. We'll start here at point number one and we'll start to measure. All right, here we go. I am going nice and slow, measuring around this island. Very good. I'm going to just come over here to the right to capture point number two. And as you can see, all those little purple squares those are images being collected by the iPhone's camera. And it's generating that point cloud down at the bottom. You can also see that in the live view. All right, here we are at point number three. I'm gonna come to the right. I've got point number three. Now I'll go back and we'll just continue down this line. And we're nearing back to the start point. So now we can finish strong. There we go. I will then pause and I will hit this check mark. And there we go. We have all of our images calibrated. If I click on the image tab right here, I can see all 409 images that were collected. Very, very nice. Now I have this SanDisk USB that I use. Now what I love about this flash drive is that on one end, it is just a standard USB-A 3.0 connection. And on the other end is actually a lightning port connector. And this is what I'm going to use to transfer the data from my iPhone to my computer. If you want to check out this flash drive, check out the link in the description. I have an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to buy this product. So I'm going to take this USB and just simply plug it into my iPhone. I can then click on these three dots and export my data. And now I can export all the data that I've collected from our iPhone to my flash drive. So I'll go ahead and click save. All right, and with that, we will take all of these images, head inside so we can process all of them, and then we can compare the total station measurements with the camera on the iPhone 13 Pro. Hello and welcome. All right, I've got my iPhone right here, and down at the bottom I have my flash drive. I'm simply going to unplug this, flip it around, and plug it into my computer. 
So over here on the left, I've got this Pix4D catch folder. I'm going to go ahead and right click and extract the island iPhone file. It'll go ahead and extract over to my computer. And now I'm transferring all the files from the flash drive to my computer. And now that we've transferred over all of the images, I'm gonna open up a software called Pix4D Matic. I'm gonna name this project iPhone Camera Island. And now that this is loaded, I'm gonna move all of the files into Pix4D Matic. And it's recognized the locations of some of these images. Now you can see we have some outliers here and don't worry about those outliers. Everything will be deleted within the software. It'll know when images are just not good to be used. And if you look to the right here, you can see we have all of the images that we took using our iPhone. Now I want to introduce those three control points that we took with the total station. These three control points are what are going to align the entire project to the same coordinate system. Now it's important that we have all of these points in the same coordinate system so that we can have an apples to apples comparison. So right here I have a CSV called iPhone camera control. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and it's gonna ask me what my coordinate system is. I'm gonna say arbitrary and set the coordinates to feet. And I'll hit apply, continue, and there we go, our points are now in. Next, I'm going to georeference the location of these control points within the images and associate the coordinates to those points. I'll come over here and maximize our image viewer. And here we are, point number one, I'm just gonna select the center of it. All right, we'll do point number two. Here we go. And point number three. All right, looking good. Now that we've finished geo-referencing all of these images, we need to set up our calibration to build up our project. Up here at the top right, I have the processing options menu, and I'm gonna check off calibrate here. You notice that we have the Pix4D catch template, and this is the most optimal template to use for our iPhone because that is the app that we use to capture the data. Everything here looks good, so I'll go ahead and start the calibration. And we'll be right back when the calibration is complete. Five minutes later. All right, and the processing is complete. If we take a look here, I will change this over to the 3D viewer. And these are all the little tie points, which are the prominent features that were captured from all of the images. And there are also the three control points that we set. So if we take a look at the control points, we can see that the relative positional error is about one tenth of a foot, which is equivalent to three centimeters. This is expected because we're using an iPhone and not a survey grade piece of equipment. Nonetheless, with just the images, we were able to tie everything in within one tenth, which I think is pretty good for an iPhone. Now that we've aligned all of our images to the same coordinate system as the total station, it's time to process a dense version of this point cloud so that we have lots of points to work with. I'll go back over to the processing options and I will check off Densify. I'll also check off the noise filter and the sky filter and we'll go ahead and start processing. Eventually. And the point cloud is now done processing. Let's take a look at it. This is a 3D reconstruction of the entire project using just images from an iPhone. And it's quite remarkable to see how much detail there is within the curb and just all along the island. If I zoom in here, you can see these are all the individual images that were taken. So it's showing the positions of all of these images. And again, you can clearly see the 3D reconstruction that came out of these images. So it's pretty impressive what you can do with just the iPhone 13 Pro's cameras. All right, I'm gonna come up here to file and I'm going to open up Pix4D survey to allow us to extract data from this island. And we're going to name this the same thing, iPhone Camera Island, we'll start. And this is going to provide us a much higher contrasted point cloud and allow us to pick points on the point cloud. And there we go, we have our point cloud. Yeah, much more vibrant than what was in Pix4D Matic because that's more of a processing software. Pix4D Survey is mainly used to extract data and to make it look nice. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is extract the back of curb feature. I'm gonna go ahead and create a layer and I'm going to call this back of curb. And now I'm going to select a point that is just relatively close to where the curb is. I will now create a new point and within the images on the right hand side, I can precisely pinpoint where the position of this curb is on every single image. The software will automatically be able to generate the coordinates for that position based off of where they're located in the imagery. So I will select right here and right here and right here and right here. 
All right, I like that. That is going to be the position of the first curb. So I'll just click away. And there we go. We have a point that is now created on the curb. And now I'll go through all of the curb positions throughout the entire island. So we'll come over here. Now with this one, it's a little tougher because there's some vegetation, but I will go through all the images until I can find, oh, there's a good one, until I find good images that I can reference where the position of the curb is. Okay, good. Next point. All right, next. 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 Match later. Okay, and now we have found positions for all of the curbs. Now I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it gutter. And the same principles apply here. We're going to use the images to pinpoint the exact location of where the gutter is at every single one of these points along the island. Much, much, much later. All right, if we zoom out here, you can see we have positions for all the curbs and gutters around the entire island. I will select export. And you can see I'm exporting both the curb and gutter layers. And I'm gonna go ahead and select export. Okay, now I've got two CSV files, one with the iPhone 13 Pro's images and one with the total station measurements. I'm gonna put both of these two data sets together in Excel so that we can do some calculations to find the differences between the coordinates of the points. And here we are, these are all the points for the total station and these are all the points for the iPhone. You can see here, these are the point numbers and I started them at 100 and 200, 100 being for the total station points and 200 being for the iPhone points. I took all my measurements in feet because I'm American, but I will give the differences in both feet and in centimeters. The next set of columns, I have the differences in feet and all the way to the right, I have the differences in centimeters and the formula simply is whatever the distance is in feet, I'm just going to be multiplying it by 30.48 because there are 30.48 centimeters in one foot. All right, let's find the differences. So a simple equation of equals the easting of the iPhone minus the easting of the total station and I'm just going to click and drag this over and down. All right, and as you can see, we have a large range of error. However, it is relatively small, ranging about one tenth, fifteen hundredths. Some spots it's right on. So rather than going through all of these, I'm just going to take the average of all of these points for the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So that'll be equals the average of the entire column. And there we go. And I'll just click and drag and it automatically updates everywhere. So as you can see, uh, the positional error in the easting is roughly one tenth. It's about 15 hundredths in the northing and it's only five hundredths in the elevation. That's crazy. So for my metric users, that's three centimeters in X four and a half centimeters in Y, and only one and a half centimeters in the elevation. So this iPhone definitely has the ability to provide us with relatively accurate measurements using its camera sensors. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once Apple releases the new anticipated iPhone 14, I will definitely be purchasing one and running it through the tests with the total station. So be sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on that, and I will see you guys next time.